Welcome to Visions of Victory, our weekly broadcast of Bethlehem Baptist Church in Springhouse, Pennsylvania. Thank you for joining us where we remember the words of the psalmist David. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. So sit back and relax because the next voice you'll hear is that of our pastor, Charles W. Kwan. Our gracious God, we come now to this moment to hear your word. We pray, Lord, that you would saturate me by your spirit divine. The word may come forth with clarity and purpose. Bless, O oh God, the hearers of the word. and May you get the glory. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ do we pray. Amen. I would argue strongly that there are many families, marriages, and relationships where love is missing. There are homes in which families live together, but no love expressed. To make matters worse, some of those are believers' homes. There are people who come to church almost seven days a week and go home to an empty house with no love at all. Our society has become driven by hate, and consequently, love is hard to find anywhere. I would also argue that you got to work at love. Love is hard. Love requires sacrifices. And there are many people who have grown up who have never experienced love, so consequently they cannot give love. If you've never been exposed to love, how do you know what love really is? Love is more than a feeling. Love is an action word. You can't say you love someone and then treat them as if they don't exist. A beautiful home does not necessarily mean you have love, you have furniture. You've got to work at making love fresh. And above all, we have to love unconditionally the way God loves us. We don't love because people love us. We love because that's who we are. And there are those who say that love is stronger than hate. However, it seems like hate is winning. I need some help this morning. Because love is patient. Love is kind. Love is forgiving. And let me stop right here a moment because some of us can never get to the point that we can forgive. But let me say something else. You can't be married any length of time and not ask God to forgive you. I'm not talking about the other person. I'm talking about you. Because all of us need to be forgiven. Even when we think we're right. And most of us think we're right all the time. Love is not based on material things. Love is not based on looks. Some folk fall in love because a person looks good, but that doesn't last long. You don't look like you used to look. And you'll never look like you used to look. I don't care how many times you try to make up, dress up, fess up. You're just covering up. Romantic love. It's got to be more than romantic love. I remember saying romance without finance is nonsense. Romantic love won't last too long. As soon as you get to the point you can't put anything on the table, you're out, brother. You're out.
Love is caring. Love is sharing. Love is unselfish. And you can't love in the flesh. That's why I said earlier, you can't go by your feelings because you can feel good one day and all of a sudden the person makes you feel another way and then you don't love that person anymore. How many of us really value our value, our, our vows that we said on the day that we got married? I, you know, I've seen all kinds of weddings. They make up their own vows. They have elaborate weddings and then still don't last. It's more than just a ceremony. At the end of that ceremony, you have a large wedding, you got a large bill. So it's got to be more than just a day. It's a lifetime together. It's sacrificial love. And also in the church, we've been called to love our neighbors as ourselves. We've also been called to love our enemies. That's hard. You can't do that. I don't care how much you can recite the word of God. Unless you have God in you, you can't love your enemy. Some of us don't love folk who love us. That's alone loving the enemy. That's why also, my brothers and sisters, we have to be careful, even with the environment we're in now, that we don't turn against each other based upon who voted for who. You'll get that about 11 o'clock as well. Every person who voted for Donald Trump is not necessarily a hater. And every person who voted for Hillary Clinton is not necessarily a lover. So you can't base it on what people look like, where they live, how they voted. I've said before, and this is hard work, not to lose relationships over somebody who voted in another direction. That was very clear to me uh, just a couple of days ago when I said something and I felt this person go, oh, and I said, oh, Lord, keep this relationship strong because I didn't know what they were thinking when I was talking. I'm thinking one way that they were thinking the same way and they let me know they were not thinking the way I was thinking. And I said, Lord, just check me now so I don't mess up this relationship because I was a little upset. I felt we were on the same page. And you, anybody feel me? I, I mean, I just felt like we're on the same page, you know, so I can talk to this person. They said, no. Uh, so, oh, 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 whoa, whoa, wait, wait, wait. Because I value that relationship. It's been a long relationship, and I was not going to let it go by because this person had voted another way, even though I didn't know it. I assumed they voted the way I did. But the relationship was, to me, stronger and more meaningful than the vote. You'll get that by 11 o'clock. I would not be married these number of years without God forgiving me. If Tanya were here, she'd say amen. Because I know I messed up. And relationships are two ways. You can never feel like you're always right. The Bible, God's holy word, teaches believers the way we should love one another. The many instructions on how we are to love, they include family, marriage, our brothers and sisters, our love of God. I would ask that you would stand as we turn to 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the ninth and tenth verse. Listen to these words, but we don't need to write to you about the importance of loving each other. For God himself has taught you to love one another. Indeed, you've already shown your love for all the believers throughout Macedonia. Even so, dear brothers and sisters, we urge you to love them even more. I want to speak this morning about learning to love, loving to love. Will you simply say that with me? Learning to love and loving to love. You may take your seat. 
as we walk around the text, the Christian virtue of love, this particular case speaks of brotherly love for a fellow believer. God taught them to love all their brothers and sisters in Macedonia. Their love for one another has been their recognition from other churches. Yet they're even to love even more. He speaks a brotherly love and tells to keep loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind. I believe in my heart that there ought to be another brother that you love the way you love God. I believe sisters ought to have another sister who's not biologically connected, but spiritually connected, that you love. Friendship is a gift from God. How do we maintain friendship? Some of us gain a friend today and lose him before the day is over. You got to work at relationships. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Because sometimes friends will say things that they may not necessarily mean, or you might interpret them wrong, or they might mean what they say. And you have to have the spirit of forgiveness so that your relationship with them does not die because they said something that you don't agree with. So your ability to keep friends is a mark of your Christian walk with God. You got to have some close friends. People that you trust, people that you love, people that you can confide in. And people also who can tell you when you're wrong. That's what love will do. They will, come on, somebody talk to me. If you love somebody, you'll correct them. Brotherly love, sisterly love. Our love for one another is crucial to our walk with God. How can we say that we love God and not love those we see every day? In our marriage, love has to be at the heart of it. In our families, and let me also say the truth about it is that there are many families where folks are not speaking to each other. I'm coming down your street. You see it at weddings, at funerals, and folk in the church, because I believe as Christians, we ought to take the initiative. You know what Michelle Obama said? That is true. When they go low, we go high. So as a believer, when people go low, we ought to go high. Come on, somebody talk to me. Would you say that you're a believer in Christ and somebody else comes down your street and knocks you on your door and gives you a cuss out? I'm coming down your street. You have to maintain who you are, not let people take you out of who you are. If you say you love me, then sure. Love is an action word. It's more than just saying it. It's more than a card. Some of us will go out and buy cards, and that's fine for Valentine's Day and candy, but you're just doing it out of tradition. You're doing it because you want a meal when you get home. Did you bring me a card? <laughs> Love is more than just a day. You know, sometimes I look at couples, and I'm trying to find a word so I would be politically correct, because uh, I don't want to call them seniors, because I may be in that category. So, uh, so I, I, I sometimes I watch couples who are in the twilight of the years. And neither one of them can hardly walk, but they're walking down the street holding hands and looking at each other. And I see couples, they, they just like this. You know, they, they're young and they're just walking. Here's one, you know, no, there's no love in anywhere. You, know. you have to work at loving the other person. And let me also say, it may be redundant, but you can't do it by yourself. You can't even forgive by yourself because your memory won't let you forgive. They did this to me. So don't worry about what they did to you. Worry about how good God's been to you. And this church in Thessalonica was recognized and affirmed because they had 
grown to love one another, and even God says, love even more. You got to get to the point that nobody can beat you loving. Nobody can beat you loving. God had taught them how to love. Their love was born out of the heart of God. Your love has to be cultivated by God. Their love was born out of a Christian experience. Don't wait, my brothers and sisters, to tragedy comes to fall in love with God. Don't wait until a bad experience comes for you to recognize how much God loves you. God had taught them. So how much have you learned about God's love as a believer? I hear people talking all the time, you know, about what they don't do. I join church. I don't do this. I don't do that. So the question I want to ask is, well, what do you do? So it's not about what you don't stop. It's about what you start. You start loving people who don't look like you, don't talk like you. And the tragedy is, let me say something else, even as we observe African Awareness Month, this is the hard stuff. Because we have been treated sometimes ungodly, because we have experienced slavery and because we have experienced oppression, it makes it hard for some of us to love. It's the fact. It's hard to understand that when you've been through some mess. But God calls us to move beyond what we've gone through to reach a higher level in love. And we're not careful, we're just stuck in the past. That's the lonely being the capital and seaport. They have people who have come and gone. So they have opportunities. God's given us opportunities to love each other. We have gone places and done things, and God has allowed us to meet different people and to fall in love with them. We can never stop loving. That's our responsibility. No matter what people do, we have to keep on loving. And that can be hard and difficult. You know, it's hard to love people who don't love you. Some of us can't love people who love us. But when you know somebody doesn't love you, I mean, if you told me you didn't love me, I might not even talk to you anymore in my flesh. How many of us would, suppose I came up to you, my brother, and said, you know what? You're here for the first time. I don't like you. You... I don't know what she would do, but I, <laughs> I mean, because we are the kind of people who want to be loved. How do you feel when somebody tells you, I love you? <sighs> Brothers, I'm going to ask you one question. How do you feel when your wife tells you that she loves you? <laughs> Too much information. N never ask him again. Lord Jesus. Love is a word we all want to hear. Do you realize children want to hear it? Mommy loves you. Do you realize those are the words that children want to hear at an early age? When children have never heard the word love, they respond in negative ways. That's why we have so many situations, particularly among African-American men, they never have been exposed to have a father tell them they love them. Men need fathers to tell them that they love them. I've heard so many people say, I've never been told I've been loved. In your marriage, don't you want to hear the words love? I'm not asking for a whole lot of information. Don't, don't, don't talk, you know what I mean? Just keep some, but, but but, but it, it, it is a warm feeling. It is a warm feeling. And particularly when you don't want anything, you know. Just, just to say, I love you. Um, well, let me tell you this. I try to call my sons almost every day. And because I never heard from my father, Words like, I love you. I never end the conversation without saying, I love you. But they in turn say, I love you, Dad. Do you know what that makes me feel like? 
I feel like I can walk on water. I mean, you know, I love you, Dad. And, and they love me in spite of seeing some of the flaws in me. Because I have also reprimanded them, done some things. You know, my sons every now and tell me, said, Dad, you punished me when I didn't do anything. But the mere fact that they can convey that love to me, it sets my life on fire. And I know how I feel when my wife tells me she loves me, even though she might be looking for something. <laughs> but it's a conversation we need to have with one another. How many times have you heard fellow believers say, Pastor, I love you? It means a world of good. What we did today for this family expresses love. Not just what we say, but what we do. And sometimes we speak so loud that our actions drown out what we really mean. You got to follow through with your actions about love. The church at Thessalonica was complimented by God for their love for one another. The church is really a place of love. If there's no love, we're not no longer the church. When you come to Bethlehem, there ought to be a sense of love and genuine love here that everybody is somebody. There are no VIPs, no very sport. Everybody belongs to the house of God. Everybody is valued in the sight of God, no matter with their education, no matter their, where they live. Everybody is somebody in the house of God. And we don't love people because they dress like us and talk like us and praise like us. We love people because that's who we are. And let me also say, as I conclude this sermon, we love folk who are not in Christ yet. Our love is not just for the folk in Christ. We love the drug addict, the prostitute. Come on, somebody. We love everybody because God saved us when we were unlovable. So we love them the same way. We don't have margins of love or categories of love. We love everybody the same way. Can't turn it on and off like a spigot. Some of us have dissolved, resolved in our mind who we're going to love. And I must admit, I, uh, is this on TV, Joe? Donald Trump has put a new definition of love for me. Because I'm trying to figure out how I can love him as it relates to the word of God. I, I, I'm, you know, so I got to keep on working at that. You know, uh, but God calls me to be responsible for my way of responding to him. So I'm not praying for his demise. I'm praying the Lord will touch him. Convict him. Turn him around the same way he turned me around. Because I know that I was a mess before God saved me. Anybody here know that God can change anybody? Anybody was a mess? Now maybe you have always been saved, but I haven't always been saved. I haven't always been the person I am now. But God. But God changed me. I'm not what I want to be, but I'm thank God I'm not what I used to be. And if God can change me, he can change him. And I told you this story before, but it, it's the truth. It's the truth. And I'm going to tell you again because I wanted to stick in I dislike my father. You've heard that story before, but I'm telling you again so that somebody may understand what I'm trying to say. And God spoke to me and said, how in the world could you walk around with all that hate in your heart as good as I've been to you? And I was justifying why I disliked the man. I had all these reasons why he was no good, how I had no right to love him. 
and felt justified in feeling the way I did. And the Lord said, no. There's no justification for you to be that way. Haven't I blessed you in spite of him? Haven't I been good to you in spite of what he has done to you? Why are you focusing on him? Give me some credit. So the Lord allowed me to go and resolve my issues with him. And now I wear his ring as a sign of forgiveness that God took out of my heart. That mean spirit against him. He didn't even know it, but I knew it. And my spirit in me prevented me from loving others because I was cautious. See, once you get hurt, you're cautious. Oh, I, I'm coming down your street. You know, if you've been in a bad marriage before, you better get over it because the next one, you're going to be in the same situation. You got to get over some stuff. Somebody hurts you before, you got to get over it because if you carry that, it'll go into the next relationship. And that's platonic. Doesn't matter what relationship it is. So you got to be clean so that your love can be pure. I'm finished. You have it? You can't be polluted. In order for you to love someone, you got to be clean yourself. And I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, that God has a way of purifying us and taking out that hard heart of ours and replacing it with a new spirit of love. And that's what he did for the people in Thessalonica, that they were being used by God, that God would get the glory. And I pray today that your love for God and your love for people is so consistent that when people see you, they see a new individual who's been changed by the power of God. And God does have the power. Oh, love that will not let me go. I give myself to thee. When you give yourself to God, he will free you and allow you to love unconditionally. Oh, come on, somebody talk to me. Anybody learn how to love unconditionally? Anybody learn how to love when folks are not lovable? Anybody here learn how to love when people do not even deserve to be loved? Anybody here know about the power of love? Does love work? Does, does love work? Does love work? Is love stronger than hate? I can't hear you. Is love stronger than hate? Does love stronger than hate? I can't hear you. Is love stronger than hate? I can't hear you. Do you really believe is love stronger than hate? Will love cover a multitude of sins? I can't hear you. Will love work in the end bring you victory? Anybody know that love will always win out? These three things, but the greatest of these is what? Love. Love always wins. So you know what I have learned to do, brothers? And I, this is it. This is on marriage. I have learned the secret of keeping love alive in our home. We hope you've been inspired and encouraged by today's message. You're invited to visit us at Bethlehem Baptist, a warm multicultural church with two Sunday services, 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. We're located in Springhouse, Pennsylvania at Penland Pike and Dager Road, only 15 minutes from Philadelphia. We hope to see you soon. God bless you and remember, love God, serve people.